Good morning. We'd like to welcome all of you this morning as we've gathered for worship on this Communion Sunday and Blanket Sunday, and we'll be talking more about that um, as we move through the service. But a word of welcome to all of you. We're glad that you've joined us uh, this morning in person. For those who are here, uh, for those who are watching uh, live, um, we welcome you as well. Uh, and just a quick word about uh, a change. Those of you who are here don't aren't, aren't aware of this change, but for those who are watching online, you'll, you've noticed that you were invited to join, uh, to click on the Facebook uh, post and uh, it will take you to YouTube. Um, this is a change that we've, we're making. Uh, we're going to see how it works, but it should work uh, more smoothly. We've had some issues, as you know, uh, for those who are watching on, with, it, with lagging on Facebook and some, uh, some difficulties with maneuvering in that uh, platform. And then also uh, some copyright things that they believe are copyright issues, uh, but we have a license to, um, to play hymns and songs that we, we play. Uh, and so YouTube, we hope, won't be muting those uh, musical things so you can enjoy the full uh, service without having parts cut in and out and, and some of the issues that we were having with Facebook. So it is a change. Uh, if you want to comment, uh, you will have to create a YouTube channel. It's very easy. I just did it myself because I didn't know how to do that and I figured it out. So if I can figure it out, um, you can. And so you just click, it tells you what to do and it just brings you back and then you can comment. So um, we're gonna give this a shot. We hope that it will be uh, more effective for those who are at home. Um, and again, we're gl always glad to have you join us at home. Um, and for those who are at home, you'll wanna have your community elements ready uh, for later in the service. Now, let's prepare our hearts for worship as we uh, share it together in the time of the prelude.
gracious God, we give you thanks for sending your son, Jesus. We're thankful for the opportunity that we have this morning to remember his great gift of his life on the cross for us. We're thankful that it is only his blood that can save us from our sin and can make us whole again. And so we pray that as we worship this morning that you would help us to examine our hearts, our lives, to be prepared to enter into your presence. Speak to our hearts this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number uh, 98. We'll invite you to stand as we sing uh, together uh, to God be the glory. Take a moment to uh, greet someone this morning before you're seated, and we look forward to hearing from our junior choir uh, as they've come.
Let me invite the rest of the children to join us for a brown bag time. Good morning, everybody. So this morning, um, we some of you know um, some of you have been here when we've done this before, and some of you are new, and that's great to have so many new, uh, new folks with us um, this morning. But uh, does anybody remember what Blanket Sunday is? For those who have been here before, anybody remember? Oh, good. So we're going to learn about Blanket Sunday. So Blanket Sunday is um, a day when uh, we'll, it's a special offering that we're going to take, and we're going to talk more about that. But the scripture that we're going to read this morning actually says, um, tells us that... Um, in the old way of thinking about things, uh, we, we were, um, people were, were justified by what they did, um, meaning that you know, if they did good works and they did um, nice things for people, that that was pleasing to God. Um, but then Paul said, you know, Jesus came along and says, shows us a different way. And um, it's not about earning favor with God or, or doing things that, to do uh, nice things for people to earn favor with God. It's about our faith. It's about what we believe. And um, so we can do all the good in the world, but if we don't believe in God and we don't, we don't have a faith in Jesus, um, it does some nice things for people, but it doesn't, it's nothing, has nothing to do with our, our salvation and our, our faith in God. So um, Paul says, all we have to do is believe. If we believe and have faith, then, then God works in our lives and, and changes us and justifies us. And then we do good things for others because what God, when God lives in us, we want to share that love with others. So Blanket Sunday is an opportunity for us to do that. So um, rather than me take a lot of time to talk about it, I want you to watch this video. Um, and you're going to hear about some things that we do because we love God. And because we love God, we want to share uh, that love with others. So take a look. Oh, hold on. Let me turn the TVs on. Um, that helps, doesn't it? Oh, were they? They were? Oh, maybe, they, maybe it is on. Okay. Aaron, did you turn these on? Okay, they were on. Okay, okay. I might have just turned that one off. But. Now we're on, okay. I, I, the, the red light wasn't on, so it should have been on, but here we go. <laughs> so,
So, so while, they're, while they're getting that, um, what we're going to do during the communion offering is take the offering using the blankets, and we're going to need you guys to help um, grab a piece of the blanket, part of the blanket, and walk around and take the offering. But we'll watch this because I think we're ready. came today to Berrien Springs to Neighbor to Neighbor and got a tour of their mission here and we came through one room and saw a huge stack of the church world service blankets and I'd only seen them one or two at a time and it was overwhelming to know to be part of that mission that is such a simple thing to do but how what an impact it makes on people. Those blankets just represent families upon families that are going to have warmth and, and love shown to them. Given this opportunity to come across the state and see our blankets put into action and the donations put into action, feel them with our hands and see a facility that actually gives them out was awesome. When you get a blanket, you can feel happy and joyful and you can feel that someone cares about you. Now she knows what the other end of it looks like and how Church World Service and Blanket Sunday actually benefits people and actually helps people. You don't know how far that blanket can go, especially for a family of five or a family of six and they only have one to share, you know, and they come and it's like, here's another blanket and they're just like, oh, this is what I just needed. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank every church that's been involved in the Church World Service Blanket Sunday. It does make an impact. It does show love and care to everyone. God bless you. I want to say thank you to all the churches that have a Blanket Sunday, and I saw how they donated the money, and it's awesome. So whenever someone is in need or there's an emergency or um, there's just folks that, that don't have enough to, to stay warm, Church World Service provides blankets. And the, there's two blankets behind you on the altar. There's an orange one and a gray one. Those are examples of what they actually um, give out to people. So for every $10 that we give, we buy a blanket that's used to share warmth and, and God's love with people who are in need. So um, it's an opportunity for us to... to um, show to do some good in the world and uh, when it's time for the offering what I'm going to have you do is come up and um, we're going to open up the two blankets unfold them and everybody's going to grab a, a corner or an edge and just walk around and uh, everybody that's here that has a communion offering is going to help um, give by putting it in the in the in the blanket yeah I remember this you remember doing it? okay so so yeah you, you'll remember it'll come back when we do that so uh, we're gonna have a word of prayer and we'll let you go back to your seats and then when we get to uh, the communion offering we'll have you come back up let's pray gracious god we thank you for the opportunity that we have to share your love with others we thank you that um, because of our relationship with you because you have because you sent jesus to show your love and um, we're saved from our sins through the gift of his life we're, we're grateful that we can share that love with others and so this morning we uh, ask that as we uh, take this offering that it would do all kinds of good that it would be sent wherever there is need and others would know of our love for you uh, through our gifts and we pray these things in jesus name amen okay thanks for listening thanks for your help and we'll call you up when it's time
As we continue to worship God this morning, let us offer our gifts and offerings as the ushers come. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the good things that you pour into our lives. We're grateful that we can offer these gifts back to you and ask that you would take them and use them to do the work of your kingdom. Bless the gifts and the givers in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, uh, both Matthias and Charlie are going to share our scripture reading the, uh, for us. Matthias is going to read the first uh, couple sentences, so he's going to be reading from Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, and verses 13 through 17. For the promise that 
he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his son and to the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherence of the law, who are to be the heirs is not and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is their transgression. For this reason, the promise depends on faith in order that it may rest again on grace, so that it may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believes, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Thank you, uh, Matt and Charlie. That's uh, not easy. Char um, Matt uh, decided he wanted to be uh, brave and give it a shot. So we uh, thank him for stepping up. Did a great job. So most of you know that I um, have a Dodge truck um, that sits out there. You see it if you come in the parking lot, and uh, we use it to pull the trailer. And um, it's. Uh, I, I've got to say, I've been very happy with it. It's greatly improved since the first one I owned back in the 90s that had um, paint that, that kind of oxidized, I guess, and the transmission went and it was leaking oil and uh, they've come a long ways. Uh, Pam, on the other hand, drives a small Chevy SUV. You've seen it, the gray one that, that sits, out, sits out there. Uh, Justin uh, drives a VW SUV. Um, Kristen, uh, or Tyler rather, uh, a Nissan SUV, and Kristen a Chevy sedan. And so we you know, run the gamut of different body styles and, and types of vehicles and things like that. And if we were to walk through the parking lot this morning, there would be any number of different kinds of vehicles, uh, makes and models of cars, there would be trucks, there would be SUVs, and in better weather, um, if uh, Blaze was home, he would, there might even be a motorcycle out there. Um, but if I were to ask you, what was the best selling vehicle of all of them? Over the past 46 years, does anybody have any guesses? <laughs> Somebody said Ford. Ford. Ford SUV Explorer. Um, it's a Ford. It's, it's the F-150. Um, and if you, if you watch the commercial, um, after I wrote the sermon, I actually was paying attention to the commercial, and uh, the F-150, they actually said in the commercial, it's the best-selling vehicle for the past 46 years. And it is um, the top-selling vehicle. Um, I heard all kinds of guesses. I don't know if anybody said F-150 or not, but um, for the most part, it hasn't changed a whole lot. I mean, there have been some tweaks to it, obviously, and they've changed some of the, the technology and some of the things, but for the most part, um, it's been consistently a favorite. But guess what? It's changing. After all those years, it's now going electric. Um, the F-150 Lightning. Um, now, you may want be wondering, and um, I'm sure if you drive an F-150 or if you've had one, um, you may be wondering why are they going to change something that seems to have been so consistently successful for 46 years? Why change it? Well, they said that the Ford Lightning is, uh, that's what they're calling it, the Ford Lightning. Um, it's the winner of one of the Fast Company's uh, 2022 World Changing Ideas, or World, um, World Changing Idea Awards, rather. And uh, it says they um, gave it this award because this truck can pull 10,000 pounds of cargo up steep hills. It can accelerate faster than a gas truck. It can be a handy source of electric power. On a work site, a construction crew can plug into the truck to charge cordless tool tools, um, power air compressors, and supply electricity for larger equipment. 
Um, and if your power goes out at home, you can use the truck to keep your lights on. It kind of serves as a generator for, for your home. Now, um, the other thing that it does is it cuts back on pollution and doesn't rely so heavily on fossil fuels. Um, but that's not to say that there aren't some bugs with it because there's some charging issues and there's been some things that they've had to, had to deal with. But they've changed it. And um, that sometimes is hard for people to, to grasp, that change. Now, the people of Paul's time were wondering the same thing. For years, within the Jewish faith, there was a long tradition of people being justified by works. Um, justified by what they did, the way they lived their life, the way that they obeyed God. Um, they would study the laws of the Bible. They would, um, they would read and know the Ten Commandments and follow the Ten Commandments and do their best um, to live all of those laws, remembering the Sabbath day and refraining from murder and honoring father and mother and um, refraining from adultery and stealing and, um, and trusting in God. And when they did these works, uh, they thought that they were justified meaning that they were um, in a good relationship with God and their neighbors. And to a degree, they were right, because if they could follow those things, they were uh, justified, would have been justified by those things. But the problem is, as you know, and I know, we don't follow those things all that well. We try, but we're human, and, and we don't. But for them, the model of being justified was Abraham, who they thought was a righteous man, who was the father of every Jew, and they thought that it was the way he lived his life that, that made him a favor, in favor with God. But Paul comes along and says, you know, we need to change this. For years, it's the way we've understood it, but it's not right. Paul made an important discovery when he studied the story of Abraham in the book of Genesis. He reread that and he realized that it was simply not true that Abraham was justified just by his works, by the things that he did. He says, what does the scripture say? And he wrote the answer to that. He says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So it wasn't the way in which Abraham lived his life that justified him, but rather it was the belief that he had in God. Paul says Abraham was made righteous by believing God, not just by following the law. And he was justified by his faith, not his good works. Because if it was all based on what we do and the way we live our life, I'm speaking for me now, and probably I'm assuming for all of you, we would be in trouble. At least I would be in trouble if it were based on the way that I live my life. I mean, I try, but you all know how that works. It's you try, okay, I'm not going to do that again, and, and what do you do? You do the same thing. Or I, I'm going to be good, and I'm going to do this, and then, then we don't do it. So Paul shares this world-changing idea. Anyone and everyone can be justified, not just Abraham's descendants. All we have to do is show the faith of Abraham. This faith is what we have and share when we come to this table this morning. It's the belief that Jesus came to give his life for us, to offer his life as a forgiveness of sins. And as we share in the bread and the cup, we experience God's presence again, and he speaks to our hearts. Paul says that Abraham believed in the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. He believed in the same God who raised Jesus from death to new life and who calls us into existence, calls into existence what may seem to be impossible. And he gives the example of Abraham in his life where um, he was unable to have a child, but he trusted God that they would have a child. And then he and Sarah had the child and the promise was fulfilled, even though his body was as good as dead. He believed that the promises of God, and he was persuaded that God had the power to do what he promised. Abraham had faith in God who gives life to the dead. He trusted God. He believed in the promises of God and that, the God, and that God has the power to fulfill those promises. And because of this, Paul says his faith, his belief, was what made him righteous. And it's our faith in Jesus that makes us righteous as well. So this morning, as we come to the table, let's give thanks to God. Give thanks to God that there's nothing that we can do to earn his grace and his favor, but simply trust and believe. To open our hearts to Jesus and allow his spirit to work in us. It's God's great gift of love to each one of us. So on this first Sunday of February, when we think about love, as you come to the table, 
receive the gift of God and give thanks to God for his love and for this world-changing idea that's all about our faith. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you would help us as we come to this table to give you thanks for your grace that saves us through Jesus. As we come, we pray that the bread and the cup would be ways in which we experience your love and grace in new ways. And then after being justified through our faith, we pray that you would help us to live lives that are pleasing to you. And we thank you for your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. So I invite you to turn in your hymnal to page number 13. Actually, it's page 12, not 13. I'm ahead of myself. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, this morning, let's use this prayer of confession that's in uh, the hymnal uh, to prepare our hearts to come, and we'll follow that by a time of silent confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So this morning as we uh, receive our uh, communion offering, uh, it is for uh, Church World Service Blanket Sunday. So let me invite uh, the children to come and help with the blankets. And as they uh, move through the sanctuary with the blankets, and we invite you to... Um, place your gifts in the, in the blankets. Um, we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of There is a Fountain. It's page number 622, and please remain seated.
So as Matt goes to get the prayer book this morning, we have um, some updates uh, to the list that we need to make. And as a reminder that Ted Dorothy is having uh, his surgical procedure on Tuesday, February 7th. So we want to keep uh, Ted in our prayers. Um, Amber Nigel asked for her uh, prayers for her friend Jackie, who um, has suffered a uh, seizure and um, has had some surgery for neurological issues um, and has also many spinal fractures. So we want to keep Jackie in our prayers. And then uh, also uh, for Sue and Walt Seibel. Um, Walt had a heart, another heart procedure done on Friday, um, similar to what he's had to have done before. Everything, Becky said that everything went well, um, but he did spend the night in the hospital. Um, but uh, so he's now home, but um, prayers for quick recovery from that. And of course, um, Sue with her, um, with her memory issues, uh, it's difficult for her when things aren't, aren't uh, consistent and there's not a routine and so uh, prayers for both Sue and Walt um, and then uh, from our book this morning uh, prayers for Craig Brutusel uh, for health issues requested by Linda and family so please keep Craig in your prayers um, uh, Bob and Amy Stanton asked for prayers for Joyce who is the activity director at Pittman Manor uh, recently diagnosed with breast cancer uh, prayers to find the right course of treatment and then Mark Nagical, uh, prayers for his friend Matt. He is fighting cancer and having a hard time with chemo. Um, and Mark, he's thir 13? Or young, right? Yeah. Teenager. teenager. He's a teenager. So um, please keep um, uh, Mark's friend Matt uh, in your prayers. So those are the requests. We're going to... Um, Share together the Great Thanksgiving, which is page 13, and we'll remember these uh, requests as we uh, pray together. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He came to earth to show us your love. He taught and helped and healed. And so this morning we pray for all those folks that are in need of your healing. We ask that your spirit would touch each one. For those who are dealing with um, healing from surgical procedures or dealing with cancer, um, whatever it may be, we just ask that you would provide grace and mercy and healing, not just through doctors and nurses, but through your power. We pray too that you would help each one of us to be instruments of your presence as we share with those who are in need. We thank you that it was through Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection that you gave birth to your church and delivered each one of us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And so this morning we remember how on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you and broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his friends and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those who are watching from home. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes again in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
Amen. Now with the confidence that we're God's children, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time, we would ask if Pastor Joyce would come um, and help uh, assist with communion, and also uh, Charlie and Matt. And uh, just a reminder that communion in the United Methodist Church is open to all who seek to live in a new and deeper relationship with Christ. So we invite you to come as you're led by the Spirit. Um, we're going to um, commune as we have been uh, the past uh, number of months now, inviting you to come down the center aisle and return by the side aisles. Um, there are uh, receptacles for, your, uh, for the cups. And also, if you need the gluten-free bread, it's in the little paper holder. Um, you can just let us know that. Um, and please keep in your prayers the, the, uh, and thoughts as you wait to come to the table, uh, the folks that we, we added to the prayer list, as well as those who continue on the prayer list on the back of the bulletin.
Let me share these announcements uh, before our final hymn. Uh, first, a uh, reminder that Coffee Hour uh, Fellowship follows the service as well as Sunday school and choir rehearsals uh, for the junior and chair of choir. Also, um, in, the, uh, in, in McConnell Hall on the counter, there are two sign-up sheets. One is for Coffee uh, Fellowship. Um, there's no one signed up for next Sunday or the following Sunday, so if you can take one of those two weeks, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I've been told if we don't, um, if no signups, no coffee. So um, we may, uh, you may want to think about that. And then also um, coming up on Wednesday, February 22nd is Ash Wednesday, and uh, we'll be having our Ash Wednesday soup supper. And so there's a sign up sheet for the Ash Wednesday soup supper, which is at six o'clock. The service is at seven o'clock, and we're asking people to uh, share either soup, bread, or fruit. And there's a sign-up sheet that you can uh, use to sign up uh, for that as well on the counter. Just a reminder, Eve Circle uh, is tomorrow night at seven o'clock, and uh, confirmation is tomorrow night at seven o'clock as well. Uh, confirmation for those who are in sixth grade or higher, um, it's not too late. If you did not come to the orientation, uh, come tomorrow night and we will, um, and if you have questions about that, you can see me following the service. Um, and then tonight, uh, 6.30, uh, Youth Fellowship. Um, next Sunday, the youth are taking over. And so um, they will be leading worship. And so we're gonna be planning that tonight. So if uh, you can come tonight, we invite you to come. 6.30 so we can plan uh, for next Sunday and we look forward to sharing and worship together. Um, next Sunday. Please read all the other announcements in your bulletin about the um, small group opportunities and all the things that are, that are coming up. And our closing hymn is number three, 367, He Touched Me. We'll invite you to stand as we sing together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity that we had once again to come to this, your table. Your table where you welcome all of us, where we can receive your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. 
And so having experienced once again your presence, being touched by your son Jesus, send us in the strength of your spirit that we would go into the world to share the good news wherever we go. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.